For the second time this season, Northampton kick us square in the cobblers. Hello everybody and welcome back to OUFC Fan View. It's Ian here once again for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, the Yellows were at home to Northampton Town. This video is coming out later than what I would normally like to do. I didn't have time to get the video out last night, so I'm doing it after a whole night's work, a whole night of thinking about it, a whole night of stewing on last night's result. And I'm quite glad that I did in a way because... Not to spoil anything, but there was quite a lot of anger, bitterness, rage and disappointment at the end of the game yesterday. And um, after having the night to think about it, to stew on it, my mood has softened on that overall performance. But still, the result was a bit of a stinger. Oxford United extended their unbeaten run to six games. But it's another draw, another draw. Oh, which leaves us a little bit in limbo despite moving up a place in the table. It finished Oxford United 2, Northampton Town 2. We'll go over the team news, I'll give my review of the game and then I'll give my final thoughts for both sides. Uh, please feel free to jump to any point of the video if you wish by using the timestamps down below. But if you do that, the very least you can do is hit like on this video because that does help me out so much. And if you do like the content, then consider subscribing. So let's have a look at this Oxford United team news and it was an unusual usual start in 11 for Des Buckingham but I kind of liked it and I think it showed the depth that Oxford United have got in their squad. Joe Bennett returned to left back. Billy Bowden returned into an attacking midfield role but he wasn't alone in there. Ruben Rodriguez was also an attacking midfielder which meant Brannigan was the only holding midfield player. Greg Lee was also playing higher up the pitch. He was in a left wing position so very different looking Oxford United lineup. Jay Matete and Tyler Goodrum are the ones to drop out of the side from that nil-nil draw against Wickham. There's still no Elliot Moore and still no Marcus McGuane. It's the second game missing for them after they both got minor injuries. No Tyler Bure on the bench again. But what I will say is it's still a strong bench and I do like this attacking lineup. I like to see Oxford United going out there with the intent to try and take the game to the opposition. That's the way it looked to me. Did it play out that way? Well, we'll get into that. Was the balance right? We'll get into that as well. Moving on to Northampton Town and John Brady's Cobblers started the day in 11th place and they've had an excellent return to life in League One. And if they have a good end to the season, they could still get themselves in the promotion picture and be an outside bet for the playoffs. But the form has dipped a little bit in recent weeks, but they did return to form with a 3-1 win over Bristol Rovers last weekend. And it's an unchanged side from that team that beat the gas. And of course, Northampton Hampton are looking for a league double over Oxford United. They hit us with a last minute winner 2-1 back in December and the guy who got the winner that day in the last seconds was Tyree Simpson and he spearheads the attack for Northampton tonight. But Northampton do have their fair share of injuries as well. We bemoan our injuries but Northampton have got a fair few players out but one bit of good news for them is top scorer Sam Hoskins returns to the bench. Moving on to the game now, one thing Oxford have been guilty at for many a game is how they've started the game so sluggishly, but that wasn't the case tonight. Six minutes on the clock, Oxford take the lead. It was generally a pretty good start from Oxford United, but they won the ball back high with Greg Lee on the left-hand side. Did very well, got the ball into Billy Bowden, who was in space in the middle. He got the ball to Josh Murphy, who was on the right-hand side. Murphy got to the edge of the box. Murphy in the goals, scored last Tuesday, scored this Tuesday he buried his strike smashed it into the back of the net Molden had no chance in the Northampton goal the perfect start for Oxford United 1-0 up after six minutes and Oxford were doing well in this game they had control of the game for pretty much the whole first half Northampton offered very little from an attacking point of view uh, Oxford a couple of times Sam Long made some good attacks down the right Joe uh, Joe Bennett was making some good work down the left and Oxford were getting into some good areas crosses just not meeting the hitting the target or the decision making in the final third or the final pass just wasn't there but this wasn't Oxford peppering the goal it wasn't Oxford on an all-out assault it was control and I have to say this is my bugbear is Oxford were passive for far too passive for my liking they had control of the game but they 
they didn't really push Northampton too hard. It was it was possession for possession's sake. Northampton set in it sat in like a low to mid block. Didn't really engage Oxford until they got over the halfway line. And Oxford and they did a very good job of just stifling Oxford's pressure. So we couldn't really get up ahead of steam for long periods in this first half. And it, a lot of it was resorting to. A quartet of Jamie Cumming, uh, Stefan Negru, Kieran Brown and Cameron Brannigan kind of passing it amongst themselves, trying to open up some space. And then eventually someone hitting a long pass. Invariably, it would get cut out. Northampton couldn't start anything and it would come back to Oxford. And it was kind of a flat game, but you weren't worried because Oxford, I say, were in control and Northampton weren't offering anything. But at 1-0... You're always susceptible to the opposition having a chance and scoring a goal. And that is what happened on 34 minutes. Northampton got back into this game out of absolutely nothing. But they capitalised on a defence. Billy Bowden, poor pass in the middle of the pitch, gave the ball away. And Northampton were able to break on us. And they broke with speed. And there were a number of Oxford players out of position. And Leonard got the ball outside the penalty area. Whipped in an excellent cross to the back post. And they had runners coming in from deep. And Hondemark was one of those runners. And he got on the end of this cross. And powered in a header from close range. And out of absolutely nothing, Northampton were level. But that did at least up the tempo of for the rest of the first half. And Oxford was stung into life as they were trying to get their lead back. But they didn't really, again, whilst the tempo was better, they didn't really create many chances. It was just a stinging effort from the edge of the box from Cameron Brannigan, who stung the palms of Molden, who could only push it back into the middle of the goal. But there was nobody there to capitalise on it. So we got to halftime at 1-1. And while a week ago we were very happy at this 1-1 scoreline, this time it felt very frustrating because we been Oxford have largely been untroubled in this game but it's just again just have to say they didn't do enough at 1-0 in this game to really go and get that second go and get that third and kill this game off and they left the door open to Northampton and they took their chance without really offering much in the game at all but they were leveling it Oxford's brightest spark was Josh Murphy who was the one player who was kind of trying to make things happen De devastating on the wing got his goal but it was also cutting inside to good effect as well and trying to link up the play he was doing a better job of that than the likes of Rodriguez or uh, Bowden were doing it was really he was the, the shining light from an attacking point of view but uh yeah um disappointing and frustrating uh, as i said were the emotions going into half time and at 1-1 one, one, really this game could go either way And it was a decent start for Oxford at the start of the second half. Uh, first 10 minutes of it, we had a few chances, a few shots. Greg Lee dragging a shot just wide. Billy Bowden with a couple of efforts as well. Joe Bennett did really well initially to win the ball back for Bowden's first chance high up the pitch. But Bowden's shot was blocked. And the second time round was an effort from a corner, which he put quite high over the bar. But once again, whilst Oxford had control, they, they, weren't, they weren't really creating too many chances they weren't giving Molden many chances to save and the defense wasn't really tested too much for Northampton and there were the odd mistake that was creeping in in Oxford's play and every time Northampton did get a chance to put a few passes together they did look quite dangerous and you were just worried that this script would have a sting in the tail of Northampton getting that second goal and Oxford kind of really just not being able to get back into the game but the game was quite and the game did go quite flat for a bit in the first half and certainly for a bit in the second half but Des Buckingham did make a triple substitution with about 20 minutes to go Brannigan was one of the ones that came off uh, with a slight injury which is a worry hopefully that's not going to be something that that um, keeps him out at all or even for one game would be a disaster but hopefully certainly not for a long time but we saw Dale introduced and we saw Will Goodwin introduced and you were hoping that would give a bit of spark around the place because it felt flat and it felt watching it that there was just a lack of belief around the stadium. There was a lack of belief from the fans. I didn't really feel Oxford were going to get a winner. And you kind of felt that the players didn't really feel it either. And it did kind of meander along a little bit with Oxford plodding along, but again, in control of the game. But on 80 minutes... Oxford did make it 2-1 and it was the super subs that combined to get the job done and that was encouraging to see. Owen Dale wasn't great when he played against uh, in the game the other week 
against Wigan but he was much better when he came on today and he looked lively and he got an assist for this goal good work down the right hand side for him excellent cross low flat cross into the box Will Goodwin gets his first goal a lovely deft header sort of stooped backwards glided the ball into the far corner of the goal relief around the stadium relief I'm sure for Goodwin excellent to see him scoring a goal hopefully the first of many Oxford back in the lead with well, 10 minutes to go and a lot of injury time. We've got to hold on to this. And Oxford did have chances to put this game to bed. There was a good break with which Rodriguez got the ball on the left-hand side. It was a wicked cross into the box. It just evaded Lee. It just evaded Goodwin. Uh, and the chance went begging. And Tyler Goodrum, about four minutes later, got on the end of a slack bit of defending. He was kind of through on goal, but we're in very close range to Molden. And he tried to lob it over the goalie. But Molden stuck out a big hand and clawed it away for a corner. That ended ended up being a very, very key chance and a very key save for the Cobblers' stopper. And then we got into injury time and calamity struck once again and Northampton got the equaliser and it was a... A horror show defensively, really. A, a calamity of errors for Oxford United and it's one where... I will try my best to describe it and I wouldn't advise looking at the highlights because it will just make yourself annoyed. But Oxford were in control of the football and on control of the ball and you, they didn't look like they were going to concede a goal. And out of nothing, mistakes just happened. Sam Long, who I thought had a good game, he gets so much abuse online. I thought he had a good game. He made a mistake. He made a bad mistake. He's in the Northampton half and he hits like a, a, a really long 60-yard ball back to coming. Didn't need to do it. Just put Oxford under a little bit of pressure that was didn't need to be there. Northampton play a ball forward. There's a Northampton player stood behind Negru and it puts Negru off. He's not off, so he's not given offside. But it puts Negru off. It's not an excuse. It's just a fact it happened. And Negru was in two minds and he got his pocket picked. And Northampton started an attack down the left-hand side. But Oxford could have cleared this ball. I know Matete could have cleared this ball. I don't think he looked very good when he came on. And he had chances to clear it. Other players had chances to clear it. But Northampton kept this attack alive. They got a cross into the penalty area. It wasn't great, but it fell to a Northampton guy from close range. It was Springart and he tucked it away from close range devastating body blow for Oxford United. Northampton, I give you credit for staying in this game and being clinical with the chances that came your way. But this draw, as it ended in a point, really felt like a loss. And that brings me on to my final thoughts. And let's start with Northampton. I really don't have a lot to say about you for North, this Northampton side. That They didn't play great. But they hung in the game. They defended well. They, they stifled Oxford. They did all they could to sit in the game. And they were bloody ruthless with the chances that came their way. Probably only two shots on target in the game. No corners in the game. But I tell you what, they've scored two goals. And I don't think Northampton fans, who travelled in great numbers and made great noise today, credit to you Cobblers, I don't think that's unfair to say that. And I think that many of you will say that you kind of nicked a, nicked a draw out of that you didn't really deserve in this one. I'm not. It doesn't matter, and who cares? You nick to draw. That's all that matters at the end of the day. And we've seen much better from Northampton this season. We saw much better from Northampton at six fields, and I'm sure when you get the likes of Hoskins back, you'll be a, a lot more potent going forward in future games. But it doesn't matter. You've got a draw, and good luck for the rest of the season. Let me know your thoughts, whether you still think you're in a promotion push for the remainder of the season, or whether you're just content to be in mid-table and and just you know what a great job John Brady's doing let me know your thoughts on what you think was going to happen for the rest of the season and if you can take some points off them promotion rivals that'll be pretty sweet and that moves me on to Oxford United and as I said I have had time to think about this performance now and the 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 disappointment's still there, but the anger and the rage and that kind of wanting to find a smoking gun to pin this result on has subsided a little bit. And, and generally, there were things to be positive in this result. 
it's just unfortunate that it's another draw. It's become off. It, it, these are far too many draws now. Five out of the last six. It doesn't make mean that we've made much any ground or we've pulled away from the chasing pack. It just leaves our season in a little bit of limbo as we sort of crawl along at a snail's pace. But I do think there were things to be encouraged by in this performance. I thought that was a decent lineup that Des Buckingham picked today. It showed attacking intent. I thought Northampton dealt with it quite well. I thought that Oxford did get the ball wide into some good areas. I just thought that the the uh, decision making in the final third just wasn't there. Like uh, the uh, the wrong, people got into good positions, just played the wrong pass or overhit the pass, or the crosses just weren't accurate enough when they came in. But I thought Oxford had so much control over this game that that they didn't they were just so good at winning the ball back from Northampton and starting attacks and it yeah it was a little bit slow and I, I would like to see more killer instinct in the first half I would like to see more from Bowden and Rodriguez I'd like to see them take the pressure off Negru and Brown and come a little deeper to get the ball to start some attacks because Brown and Negru aren't defenders that are gonna run through the lines and break lines it's unfair to think they can do that especially Negru um, so what they these midfielders needed to take the pressure off, and they didn't really do that, and that's disappointing. But overall, Oxford had an excellent amount of control in this game. Josh Murphy looked great. Um, it, 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 it surprised he came off, but he was replaced by Owen Dale. And Owen Dale looked good when he came on. And Will Goodwin got his first goal. And he looked excellent when he came on. And he, he made a difference in this one. Should have been the match winner. It's just Oxford got punished from the mistakes they made. A mistake in the first half gets punished, a mistake in the second half gets punished, and you come away just wanting to blame someone. There's a lot of people blaming Sam Long. I thought he played well today. And overall, I thought it was a good performance. We just were a bit unlucky, it has to be said. And I don't think you need to blame Des Buckingham for this one either. I think that... It's a good team selection. He's made good subs. The subs have worked. The subs have got a goal. We should have got over the line in this game. We should have killed this game off. We just didn't. You can't always go back to blaming him and, you know, just talking about, oh, you know, we didn't win again, so it must be Des Buckingham's fault. You need to have a little bit of perspective. That being said, though, it is only a point. And that's the thing that is the most frustrating of all. It, it, we, we've moved up to fifth place in the table, but we fail, as I said, it just feels like we're in a limbo state at the moment. You, you, there's a, The quality is there in this squad. We just don't seem to be able to sustain it over 90 minutes, which is a worry. And we just don't seem like we're able to close a game out and shut a game out, which is a worry. But this was an... Im I thought that there was a lot to be encouraged by in this performance today. And Oxford did control this game for large aspects of it. And if, if, if we can take that forward now and make that the consistent uh, level in terms of controlling games... We should start winning games, but we're not winning games. And I get that's going to be a worry for people. It puts a lot of pressure on this Leighton Orient game. I know it's a big game and I know we need a win. And I know we needed a win tonight and I know we should have won tonight. You don't need to tell me these things in the comment. I'm well aware of that. I'm well aware that we've got the players back now and we're still not winning games. I'm aware of all those things, but it is better than what we have seen in recent weeks. And hopefully that improvement will keep coming now and we will start to get be be more of a consistent side as the season goes on it's not a great run it's an unbeaten run but it's not great and we really do need to win this game on Saturday and if we don't then you really have to start asking question marks we're, it, it, we're fortunate that there's a lot of inconsistent teams you know Peterborough have been inconsistent Stevenage ourselves Blackpool none of us are taking it by the scruff of the neck at the moment and hopefully we are going to be the side that does that I, I'm 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 confident though that we can still go into tougher games and get stuff against get for stuff get results against the tougher games that we have to play but Oxford have got to start doing rather than talking about it and I do totally understand that but let me know your comments down below I'm really interested to know about it. Um, I'll be back to do a review of the Leighton Orient game at the weekend. Please, Oxford, get a win in that one. Oh, 
or are going to be dreading doing a video. But hey, if they lose, maybe I'll get more views. So that's one silver lining. But thank you once again, and uh, I'll be back for the weekend. Bye for now. Come on, you yellows.